السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ بیٹھے تلاوت رحیل احمد السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد أيحسب أن لن يقدر عليه أحد يقول أهلكت مالا لبدا أيحسب أن لم يره أحد ألم نجعل له عينين ولسانا وشفتين وهديناه النجدين فلقت حمل عقبة وما أدراك ما العقبة فك رقبة أو إطعام في يوم ذي مصغبة يتيما ذا مقربة أو مسكينا ذا متربة ثم كان من الذين آمنوا وتواصوا بالصبر وتواسوا بالصبر وتواسوا بالمرحمة أولئك أصحاب الميمنة والذين كفروا بآياتنا هم أصحاب المشأمة <coughs> The verses recited before you are from Surah Al-Balad, chapter 90, verse 5 to 19. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed in the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. We have surely created man to toil and struggle. Does he think that no one has power over him? <clears throat> he says, I have spent enormous wealth. Does he think that no one sees him? Have we not given him two eyes? and a tongue and two lips. And we have pointed out to him the two highways of good and evil. But he attempted not the steep ascent. And what should make thee know what the steep ascent is? 
It is the freeing of a slave or feeding a day or feeding on a day of hunger an orphan near of kin or a poor man lying in the dust. Then he should have been of those who believe and exhort one another to perseverance and exhort one another to mercy. These are the people of right hand, but those who believe, those who disbelieve, but those who disbelieve are signs, they are the people of the left hand. Jazakumullah. <coughs> Conference report, Sayyid Ahmad Yayasab, Chairman, Humanity First International. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Beloved Hazrat Amirul Mu'mineen, respected delegates and guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We are very humbled and privileged to have our beloved Hazur Akhtas, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asr al Aziz, gracing us at this Humanity First International Conference 2021. Due to COVID, we were not able to hold our conference last year. Alhamdulillah, this year we have managed for the first time in our history to organize a hybrid international conference with 65 countries participating virtually with a total of 1,229 delegates as well as members present from Humanity First International, UK, USA, Canada, and Germany and have taken the opportunity to also celebrate 25 years of Humanity First. The theme of this year's conference is poverty alleviation through empowerment. For many years, Humanity First has been actively working in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in order to reduce poverty. Our human development programs are empowering local communities through training and capacity building. By the grace of Allah and with the guidance and prayers of our beloved Hazur, more volunteers and donors are coming forward to support the works of Humanity First. Hazur, we recognize that our teams have huge responsibility towards strong governance, and this conference has given us the opportunity to educate our delegates on compliance with local and international legal requirements. Beloved Hazur, I will now give a very brief summary of some of the key milestones of Humanity First during the last 26 years. Hazur Ekdas has always reminded us to have a major focus on the education of children. Under our Knowledge for Life program, over 69 schools and 22 training centers are operational. 236,400 children and over 67,500 adults have benefited from these institutions. We will continue to build new schools and enhance the facilities in the current institutions and plan to establish a virtual university in the near future, inshallah. Access to clean water has always been a key demand in developing nations our Water for Life program has installed 4,161 wells, water pumps, and solar-assisted plants, serving over 4.5 million people. We continue to work in partnership with IEEE. We continue to grow our food security initiative with over 3.2 million beneficiaries to date through direct distribution of food packs, food pantries, and food banks. The Qurbani project during Eid al-Adha is expanding each year. This year alone, Qurbani was arranged in 56 countries and meat was distributed to over 550,000 people. The Qurbani project has resulted in 2.6 million beneficiaries over the last eight years. Under human, uh, Humanity First Global Health Program, nine hospitals, clinics, medical camps, and gift of sight project continue to grow and serve. Almost 568,000 patients have been treated under this program. Humanity First 
landmark health proje healthcare project, Nasser Hospital, Guatemala, has been operational with great success for last three years. Not only has it become self-sustainable, but it uh, is also providing free health care to the underprivileged. Soon, we will be laying the foundations of the Masroor Center for Healthcare in Ivory Coast. This facility will be built with an estimated cost of 3.5 million US dollars, mainly funded by Humanity First Canada, UK, and HFI, inshallah. COVID relief is a recent example of Humanity First disaster relief conducting the largest relief program in the history by reaching out to over a million beneficiaries in 78 countries with medical, shelter, water, and food assistance. So far, we have distributed over 13.5 million meals, and additionally, we have managed to organize educational webinars and materials circulating for local communities. Hazur, we have done some statistical analysis and according to which we have calculated that Humanity First have reached almost 11.2 million beneficiaries during the last 26 years. Alhamdulillah. Beloved Hazur, all of this would not have been possible without the special blessings of Allah and khilafat e Ahmadiyya. We will continue to follow your instructions as our guiding principles in all that we do. Beloved Hazur, we are extremely grateful to you for your blessed guidance and prayers. Please remember our volunteers, donors, and supporters in your prayers. May Allah enable us to fulfill your vision of service to humanity and remain obedient servants of Khilafat Ahmadiyya. The video, 25 years of humanity first. Badeen shadam ke gham Almost 30 years ago, the fourth Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, may Allah have mercy on him, had a vision of a charity which would use funds wisely, attract noble souls from all parts of society, have a global reach, and attend to the needy, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or social status. Humanity First emerged from this seed. Humanity First is now registered in 60 countries on six continents. Over the last 26 years, Humanity First has evolved from a charity with an inspirational vision and good intentions to an organization that regularly engages with the United Nations and other international NGOs. His Holiness Hazrat Mizam Masroor Ahmed, may Allah strengthen his hand, continues to guide our teams to serve with the true spirit of dedication inspired by Islam. Let's look at the journey across each of the services that we provide. Disaster Relief In the mid-1990s, Humanity First teams in the United Kingdom and Germany sent convoys of food and clothing to the Balkans region of Europe. Over the years, we established a model for disaster relief and trained our global teams to work to a consistently high standard. Now, we can respond to concurrent disasters on different continents, collaborating with other NGOs through the United Nations. Our emergency medical teams are being accredited with the UN to be one of the select NGOs allowed to be a first responder. In the last two years, our COVID response in 78 countries has reached over 1 million people. Global health. In the early years, medical volunteers would spend their time serving in emergencies or ad hoc medical camps to extend access to care to rural communities. Now Humanity First runs skills transfer sessions to increase local clinical capacity. Humanity First has established nine hospitals and clinics, with others in the process of being established. Staff are recruited and trained to offer high quality care at minimal cost. In the last year, Humanity First surgeons have even started performing transplant procedures. Food security. Humanity First's original efforts around food security included the provision of food rations for vulnerable families. We still continue with those efforts today. However, now 
we enable entire clusters of villagers to cultivate and sell crops for themselves. We provide them with seeds, tools, fencing and access to irrigation. We provide innovative solutions and training to maximize crop yields, minimize waste and enable villagers to process crops to sell or use high value products. Even in higher income regions, poverty is on the rise. Every month, thousands of families use our food banks and pantries in Europe, Australasia and North America as a lifeline, our Water for Life program. Humanity First has been investing in infrastructure, working with the IAAAE to provide longer term solutions. Our local engineers have been trained and have repaired thousands of water hand pumps across Africa, saving long and painful journeys to access drinking water. In South Asia, more than 1,000 wells have been built and over 800 hand pumps have been established. More recently, Humanity First has been investing in solar boreholes which require no pumping and minimal maintenance and provide water on tap to multiple villages. Knowledge for Life program from initially providing ad hoc supplies for poorer students, Humanity First has now built 67 schools to extend access to education to rural children. Our Masrur Senior Secondary School in the Gambia has the largest assembly hall in the country with a capacity of over 2,000 students. Our vocational training centers offer qualifications in information technology, tailoring, languages, and technical skills through which over 60,000 graduates have gone on to gain employment and sometimes even establish their own businesses. Turning next to our Gift of Sight program. Some estimates suggest that over 235 million people live with moderate to severe visual impairment. Humanity First began by offering free cataract surgery in Africa. This expanded to over 15 countries across Africa, Asia and Central America. Today, Humanity First runs mobile eye surgery units in Burkina Faso, Benin and Togo and a new unit is about to be deployed in Uganda. Community Care Program A care home for the elderly has been established in Sao Tome and our teams are out on the streets most weekends in European cities orphan care program. We have developed more comprehensive and longer term support for orphans, including those impacted by the Ebola crisis in Sierra Leone, Liberia and Guinea. Today, Humanity First runs an orphanage in Benin with another under construction in Uganda and supports hundreds of orphans elsewhere with food, education and health care. From its roots in the UK in the mid-1990s, when Humanity First was focused on ad hoc assistance for disaster victims, Humanity First has now evolved to building longer-term infrastructure to people in need. Now, we look at the sustainable impact of projects and therefore our attention is on local training and capacity building and the provision of resources to enable communities to get themselves out of poverty. Millions of people are being reached every year through the work of Humanity First. But this is a journey and Humanity First will, inshallah, continue to grow, attract more noble souls to assist us and reach millions more people around the world. <coughs> Thank you.
grace of Allah, this weekend we have been able to hold the Humanity First International Conference. I think, and as has been mentioned in the report as well, you we intended to hold this event last year to mark Humanity First Silver Jubilee. However, due to COVID, it was delayed until now. Whilst some people have been able to attend in person due to the ongoing effects of COVID, the majority of members of Humanity First are partaking in this event remotely and are listening to my address from other countries. It has now been 26 years since Humanity First was first formally registered. And with the grace of Allah, ever since its inception, Humanity First has continued to grow and develop and has conducted a lot of impactful work in many parts of the world. It has served in some capacity or other in over 60 countries, including in the Americas, Europe, throughout Africa, the Middle East, Asia, and Pacific. In some countries, Humanity First has responded to natural disasters and provided rapid relief to the local people. Whilst in others, it has established permanent structures and ongoing programs designed to fulfill the basic needs of the local people. Amongst its various projects, Humanity First has set up food banks in various countries and arranged sacrifice of animals on a large scale at Eid for the sake of helping underprivileged people. It has established programs to support extremely vulnerable members of society, such as the homeless and orphans. Additionally, many of its programs are designed with sustainability in mind. For example, it is providing farming and agriculture support. It is giving medical training and teaching a range of skills as well as providing frontline healthcare services. Similarly, Humanity First has been running the Gift of Sight program for several years. Through its Water for Life program, Humanity First is providing clean drinking water to people living in remote parts of the world. As mentioned, it is providing disaster and emergency relief in countries afflicted by earthquakes, flooding, or other natural, natural disasters. In terms of permanent institutions, Humanity First has established schools, hospitals, orphanages, and care shelters. Thus, with the grace of Allah, Humanity First is now a very well-established and well-respected international charitable organization. Indeed, Humanity First has now reached the stage where external NGOs 
or similar humanitarian organizations are seeking to partner and collaborate with it to fulfill their own charitable obligations and objectives. For example, in one country, an international NGO linked to the United Nations expressed its desire and intention to give funds to Humanity First in order, to, in order for it to carry out humanitarian work and projects on its behalf. This demonstrates that with the grace of Allah, Humanity First has earned the respect and trust of other humanitarian or agencies, including those associated with the United Nations. Of course, this was destined to happen. As the Holy Prophet said that if, you, if your etiquettes and conduct is good, then people will appreciate you. And you may consider that you have contributed positively to society. Whilst we harbor no desire for recognition or reward, except from Allah. Increasingly, as I have said, external organizations and even certain governmental agencies have recognized and appreciated the efforts of Humanity First, which testifies to the beneficial work, uh, um, uh, beneficial, uh, works conducted. It reflects the fact that Humanity First has earnestly strived to fulfill the noble objective which Allah the Almighty has commanded us to pursue in the Holy Quran and which ought to be the lifelong objective of a Muslim. To serve humanity and to fulfill the needs of those who are facing any adversity. Repeatedly, the Holy Quran has instructed Muslims to help and aid those who are vulnerable or in need, irrespective of their caste, creed, or color. Furthermore, there are countless traditions and sayings of the Holy Prophet وسلم, that illustrate how, the spend, uh, how he spent his entire life serving mankind and striving to inculcate the same spirit of sympathy for others within his followers. Certainly, the Holy Prophet وسلم, was an everlasting source of mercy for mankind. And through his blessed, uh, blessed words and deeds, He shone an illuminating and everlasting light upon the magnificent teachings of Islam and demonstrated that serving mankind is an inherited and truly fundamental part of our faith. For example, Islam instructs us to protect, uh, to protect and support orphans, to help those who are traveling, to provide for the needy and underprivileged, and to care for those who are suffering from ill health. Also, Islam teaches that one's neighbors have great rights upon them. Muslims have been taught that they must treat their neighbors with grace and compassion and be ever ready to help them in their times of need and grief. In one well-known tradition, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that the angel Jibreel had so strongly emphasized fulfilling the rights of one's neighbors and treating them with love and sympathy that he came to think that perhaps they may be inc included amongst the amongst a Muslims' <coughs> rightful heirs. 
Furthermore, the definition of a neighbor in Islam is extremely vast and far-reaching. It not only includes people who live nearby, but also includes people who live much further afield. A person's travel companions, work colleagues, subordinates, and many others besides. In reality, the scope of one's neighbors in Islam is so vast that all members of society can be considered our neighbor. And so, striving to help all members of society to overcome their pain and anguish is the religious duty of an Ahmadi Muslim. With the grace of Allah, the, uh, through the work of Humanity First, Many Ahmadis have had the chance to serve their neighbors and fulfill their needs, including those who are nearby and also those who live much further afield in other nations and continents. Moreover, Allah the Almighty and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, have instructed Muslims to seek to alleviate the pain of those who are suffering from ill health, to provide them with medical treatment, to tenderly care for them, and to regularly inquire after their health. In this regard, the Holy Prophet said, whosoever visits a sick person for the sake of Allah, a heavenly caller will announce, may your every step be blessed and may you be rewarded with an abode in paradise. Not only has the Holy Prophet وسلم, instructed Muslims to provide relief and treatment to those who are unwell, but he has also given the glad tiding that those who make heartfelt efforts to care for the sick will be rewarded in the hereafter. Consequently, those who spend out of what Allah the Almighty has provided them to build hospitals and clinics or to provide health care are those who are actually building their homes in paradise. In light of these Islamic teachings, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has built many hospitals and schools in different countries. However, where it is not possible for us to directly build such facilities due to the religious opposition we face in some countries, Humanity First has provided an excellent avenue for us to fulfill our obligations and our ardent desire to serve others. Likewise, the Holy Quran states that those who protect and feed orphans are those who gain the nearness of Allah, whilst those who ignore their needs are those who become the recipient of His wrath. The Holy Prophet also repeatedly emphasized the importance of caring for orphans and supporting all weak and vulnerable members of society. Indeed, it is reported that the Holy Prophet once said, find me amongst the weak and poor. Surely you are provided for and helped only due to your support of the weak and deprived. Here, the Holy Prophet وسلم, proclaims that he stands shoulder to shoulder with those who are weak and defenseless, and that if a person desires to attain his love and the love of Allah, he should seek to help those who are helpless and who are the victims 
of misfortune. Unquestionably, the blessed and noble teachings and practice of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu stand as a timeless example for the Muslim community and the world at large. It was his way to care for those who were weak, deprived, or who had lost their parents or guardians at a young age, and he desired the same from the followers. Thus, never let any opportunity to serve those who are mired in poverty or subjected to hard, uh, hardship slip through your fingers and never, God forbid, allow even a trace of pride to enter your mind thinking that you are doing such people a favor. Rather, it is they who are doing you a favor because they are providing you with an opportunity to gain the pleasure of God and to reap his blessings in both this world and the next. With the grace of Allah, and they sacrifice their wealth gener generously in order to ease the plight of those who are in distress or who are the victims of privation. And it was to serve this purpose that humanity first was established. In a similar way, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that those who are hungry should be fed. And so humanity first has established food banks through which thousands of people are benefiting. Some countries have done a particularly good job in this regard, such as Canada and the UK, whilst others are also working according to their capabilities. United States, in Humanity First, United States is also running food pantries where thousands of people are benefiting from that. In terms of giving gener generously to those in need, it is narrated that the Holy Prophets of Islam وسلم, once said, each day two angels descend, one of them says, O oh Allah, grant even more to the one who spends in charity, and may there be many others who follow in his stead. Thereupon, others, other angels say, O oh Allah, may he who withholds charity and is miserly be destroyed, and may all his wealth and riches come to an end. It is purely with this intention of being able to serve others that humanity first seeks to raise funds. And having observed this spirit, many non-Ahmadis and non-Muslim individuals and groups have donated significant amounts and placed their trust in humanity first. They acknowledge that compared to the humanitarian relief agencies, they had seen how Humanity First uses its volunteers, uh, volunteer army to ensure that administrative costs are kept to a minimum so that the maximum amount of money can be used to provide support and assistance to those who need it the most. Always the primary focus and desire of every member of Humanity First should be to the interest, uh, should be to serve the interest of the weakest members of society, rather than to serve their own self-interest in any way whatsoever. Rest assured that if you serve Allah's creation selflessly and for his sake alone, then surely he will reward you in this world and the hereafter. The fact that Humanity First is administratively independent of our religious administration ensures no one can question our motivations or suggest that we gain some religious benefit or other advantage through our 
humanitarian service. Nonetheless, never forget that your true inspiration is and always will be the benevolent teachings of Islam. Do not shy away from the fact that it is your religion and your belief in Allah, the Almighty, that motivates you to serve the cause of humanity. Accordingly, wherever humanity first provides any service or wherever it invites uh, donations, strive to ensure that the people know that you are inspired by Islam's beautiful teachings and it is your religion that obligates you to serve others with empathy and a spirit of generosity. I have already spoken about how the Holy Prophet inculcated amongst his followers a desire to help those who, who were oppressed and afflicted by hardship. Following in his blessed footsteps in this era, the Prophet Messiah constantly emphasized uh, service to humanity and instructed the members of his community to serve the poor and underprivileged. It is for this reason that within the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, there is a special passion and desire to serve mankind. On one occasion, On one occasion, while speaking about fulfilling the rights of mankind, the Prophet Muhammad said, the most perilous and arduous challenge is to fulfill the rights of mankind because this is a test and trial that one is faced with at, with at all times and remains constantly before a person. Therefore, one ought to, he says, therefore, one ought to tread very carefully and be mindful when taking any step in this regard. The Prophet Muhammad further said, it is my firm conviction that even with one's enemy, one should never act with undue severity. At another place, the Prophet Muhammad said, to love mankind, and to show compassion to others is an immense form of worship of God Almighty and an outstanding means of attaining his pleasure and rewards. Enlightening us on how to serve humanity, the Prophet said, Allah the Almighty repeatedly commands that irrespective of religion or ethnicity, you should show love and compassion to all people Allah commands us to feed the hungry, free those shackled in bondage, pay off the areas of those mired in debt, shoulder, and bur shoulder the burden of others, and truly fulfill the duties owed to mankind. It was to fulfill these objectives that Humanity First was founded. It was established to serve mankind irrespective of one's beliefs or background. It was established to provide medical treatment and care to those who are afflicted with ill health. It was established to protect and shelter orphans and to help those engulfed in debt. It was established to feed those who are hungry and to quench, uh, and to quench their thirst. It was established to provide relief to those who find their worlds turned instantly upside down following natural disasters and calamities, or who are living in desperation through no fault of their own. On one occasion, whilst instructing his followers to show true 
and everlasting sympathy for mankind, the Prophet ﷺ said, each day every person should analyze himself and see to what extent he is concerned for others and to what extent he shows love and compassion to his brothers. Compassion for others is a huge demand and responsibility that weighs heavy on mankind. Further, whilst mentioning the hadith that gives light to the true magnitude of serving others, the Prophet ﷺ said, in one hadith it is narrated that on the day of judgment, Allah will say, I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was thirsty and you did not give me, give me water. I was sick and you did not meet or comfort me. Upon this, those being addressed will ask that, O oh, our Lord, when was it that you were hungry and we did not feed you? When, you was, when was it that you were thirsty and we did not quench your thirst? And when was it that you were sick and we did not comfort you? In reply, God Almighty will say that a person dear to me was suffering in this way and you did not show any compassion or kindness to him. To show love to him would actually have been to show love to me. Similarly, to, to another community, Allah, the, Almighty, Allah, the Almighty will say, I thank you as you showed love and compassion to me. When it was hungry, when I was hungry, you fed me. And when I was thirsty, you quenched my thirst. The members of that community will then ask, O oh, our Lord, when, were, did we, when did we serve you in this way? We do not know ourselves. In response, Allah will say, when you showed love and compassion to a person dear to me, you were actually manifesting your love for me. Thus, to love Allah's creation <coughs> is something truly great and deeply appreciated by Allah the Almighty. Hence, it is up to the members of humanity first to strive earnestly seeking the betterment and well-being of mankind. Never rest easy or feel satisfied with what has gone in the past. Rather, look to the future and see how and where you can increase the scope of your service for humanity. It should always be your objective to provide, provide the maximum possible service whilst utilizing the minimum possible resources. As I have mentioned, Humanity First has attained a good name whereby many external organizations recognize that Humanity First is achieving much more from a far smaller budget in comparison to much bigger charities or NGOs due to its vol uh, volunteer force and the spirit with which its members serve. Certainly, I am pleased that the workers and volunteers of Humanity First throughout the world are serving with great zeal and determination and a true spirit of service and devotion. It is my prayer that this spirit ever will uh, spirit never diminishes but only ever increases i also wish to reiterate that you must never entertain even a trace of arrogance in your hearts to think that you have done great work or that you have done a favor to those who benefit from the various humanity first projects rather at all times absolute humility and gratitude to Allah the Almighty should course through your veins. Focus always and forever on attaining the pleasure of God Almighty and keep in mind that serving others is our religious obligation and that without fulfilling the rights of mankind we cannot fulfill the rights of God Almighty. 
At the end, I also wish to offer my heartfelt great congratulations and thanks to the volunteers and team members of Humanity First because during its first quarter century, they have served in an exemplary way with great sincerity and loyalty to the cause of serving humanity. The passion of its volunteers has, has enabled Humanity First to live up to its name and to become a well-established and renowned charity and disaster relief agency. Alhamdulillah, each year, the scope of work of Humanity First has continued to expand, and I pray that this always remains the case. May its members and volunteers be those who stand ever ready to wipe away the tears of those who are in distress or hurting in any way. May you always be ready to help those blameless souls who are the victims of their circumstances to overcome their grief, desperation, and heartache. May you always stand up for the rights of the weak, deprived, and vulnerable. May Allah enable all of you to play your role in serving the cause of humanity and helping those tormented by object, uh, abject poverty and deprivation to stand upon their own two feet. May Allah the Almighty bless the efforts of humanity first and may it never take a backward st step. Rather, I pray it always marches forward in its efforts to humanity. Amin. Jazakallah. Now join me in silent prayer. I mean, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.